In my previous videos, I discussed some basic properties of EM waves, including the concepts of a wave train, the principle of superposition, and interference. In those videos, I often used this classical visual to represent a single ray of EM wave radiation. However, this visual can be misleading. In this video, I want to address this issue and present what I think is a more satisfactory way to visualize EM waves, as well as introduce you to the important concept of a wave front. It's important to understand that what this sinusoidal plot represents is the strength and direction of the electric and magnetic field of the wave, not the wave itself. Because spatial dimensions are used to represent this field strength, some people may think that the actual shape of the EM ray is wavy, wriggling around in space like a vibrating string or ripples on a pond. But that would be wrong. The actual shape of this single ray of EM wave radiation in this diagram is just a single, one-dimensional, completely straight line along the axis of travel. That's all. These sinusoidal variations represent the strength and direction of the electric and magnetic forces that will be felt by a charged body that happens to be intercepted by the single straight line ray. To make this clearer, I'll use a different visualization. To simplify the visualization, I'll only be showing the electric field component. We'll ignore the magnetic field component for now. I'll use opposite colors in this color disk to represent the positive and negative directions of the electric field, and I'll use the saturation or purity of the color to represent the strength of the field. So, this pure red color represents the strongest positive field strength, diluting it with gray indicates a weakening positive field strength, and pure gray represents zero electric field strength, so neither positive nor negative. Then, going further down, we get increasing levels of bluish-grey representing increasing negative electric field strength, till we get to pure blue, which represents the strongest negative field strength for this particular orientation of oscillation. So, let this single pixel line represent the actual single EM wave ray. Previously, we showed the electric field strength like this, but now I'll represent it with the colors like this. So, this single ray EM wave is a wave by virtue of the wavy undulation of its field strength and direction over time. It's nothing to do with having a wavy shape in space, like some water wave or vibrating string. While this is still only a graphical representation of field strength, I mean the EM ray does not actually have any color, I think this is less misleading because it does not suggest the ray itself has some kind of physical wavy shape. So, now we can use the other pairs of opposite colors on this color wheel to represent different planes of polarization of the electric field, like this. Likewise, using this color representation, we can also represent a circularly polarized EM ray along a single straight line, like this. Notice that in all cases, changing the polarization state does not affect the actual shape of the EM wave ray. It's just a straight one-dimensional line in all cases, regardless of polarization angle. The different polarization states will manifest as different directions of force felt by a charged object caught in the path of the ray. Now, if we don't need to illustrate polarization, we can simply use shades of grey to represent the undulating field vector, like this, or shades of a single colour, like this. However, even these graphics are a bit misleading, not so much because of the pseudo-colors which we can easily dismiss as a visualization tool, but rather because EM radiation does not exist in single one-dimensional rays like this, but rather in three-dimensional fields, which we can represent using the concept of wave fronts. Up to now, I've been illustrating the production of an EM wave from a vibrating atom as a one-dimensional ray to make it easy to illustrate individual properties like amplitude and polarization. In reality, however, when a point source emits a wave, we don't get a single 1D ray, but a three-dimensional sphere of radiation. You can visualize the 3D sphere of radiation as being composed of an infinite number of one-dimensional rays radiating at all angles from the origin point, like this. In practice, the whole sphere is not usually produced due to local impediments to the transmission of the energy and interference effects from nearby sources. 
To illustrate the concept of a wave front, I'll take a single 2D slice through this field like so. A wave front is defined as the set of all points on a wave that are at the same phase of undulation as each other and which are at the same optical distance from their common source. By definition, therefore, the optical distance between successive wave fronts of a particular phase must be one wavelength. Traditionally, in diagrams, you'll see wave front lines or surfaces plotted for the crest or trough phases, but you could use any phase of the field undulation cycle to define a wave front. The wave for which a wave front is defined need not be the wave from a single pure point emission source, but may also be the resultant wave produced by superposition of the wave field vectors from multiple sources. Note that the definition of a wave front includes the optical distance from the source, not the geometric distance. The optical distance or optical path length is the distance covered by a certain number of wave cycle oscillations in a vacuum. If some or all of those wave oscillations take place in an optically denser medium, you'll get bunching up of the wave cycle oscillations, so this same number of oscillations will take place in a shorter geometric distance than in the vacuum. Because optical distance is based on number of oscillations, it preserves phase relationships between two points on a wave, even if one of those points travels a different geometric distance to the other due to having passed through an optically denser medium than the other. So, because the wavefront definition is based on the optical distance from a source, a wavefront can be distorted as a result of passing through an inhomogeneous medium. This means that if we can record or sense the shape of a wavefront, this gives us information about the shape of the optical density variations of the object the radiation has passed through. In other words, the shape of the wavefront encodes information about the shape of any object the wavefront has passed through. This is in fact the basis of optical imaging in general, phase contrast imaging in general, and Gaborian holographic imaging as a special case. Thus, wavefronts can come in many different shapes, including spherical, cylindrical, plane, or irregular. Note that we can represent EM fields by either rays or wavefronts. Rays are always perpendicular to wavefronts. In this video, I explained why using spatial axes to plot field vectors can be misleading, and I demonstrated an alternative way to visualize the electric and magnetic field fluctuations using intensity or color changes. I also explained the concept of a wave front and showed how wave fronts can have a very complicated shape that encodes information about the optical structure of any medium the EM radiation has passed through. In my next video in this series, I'll talk about a statistical property of a collection of EM waves known as their degree of coherence. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up like button and view some of the other videos on my channel. If you'd like to support the project, you can do that by subscribing to this channel and telling others about it. If you'd like to help me continue this work, take a look at my Patreon page, where you'll find additional content and early bird access to future videos. Thanks for watching.